Some of you might be too young to remember this guy, this yellow, furry, goggle-eyed minion. This minion nearly gave me type 2 diabetes when I was younger. You ever remember sugar puffs? That's not the kind of honey that we are looking for in this particular video. We are looking for honey, raw honey. We are looking for honey, not, not this honey monster, a different anabolic honey monster. We're talking about the nectar of the gods. We're talking about the drones. We're talking about these. You know what's interesting about bees is that they have, they're, they're like a hive mind, pardon the pun, but they're a collective species. A drone is a singular bee. It is wrong to consider a bee as one drone. They're, they're like a collective consciousness. Amazing, amazing species, amazing, amazing biological organism. And the fruits of their labor, as they're very the very arduous and tenacious creatures is raw honey, which can have a massive, a massive benefit in terms of our anabolic profile. So this is this is the pattern that we're going to follow here. I'm just going to zoom out so you guys can kind of see how this particular chain of logic works here and through the scientific lens. So we have our anterior pituitary gland, right? And this is where we start to receive some of the benefits of honey impacting this particular area because from the anterior pituitary gland, we are going to be synthesizing LH, luteinizing hormone, which in turn is going to have a, uh, an impact on the Leydig cells. The Leydig cells are found in your testicles. If you didn't know, this is, these are your testicles. Well, one testicle, some of you might have one, but hopefully you have two. And here is where that synthesis of testosterone happens. And this, this is the real honey monster. This is the honey monster that we are all seeking to be. So there is some jesting in this video, uh, gentlemen, but I want to talk to you about, you know, the specifics of how this, you know, fascinating, phenomenal nutrient, this, this food can really impact your life. So let's just begin with the fundamentals here. So testosterone, we know this is the quintessential hormone of masculinity besides DHT. DHT having more a primary role in the earlier stages of our development as a man and especially in vitro. Now luteinizing hormone, this hormone up here, emerges as a pivotal conductor wielding its influence upon the Leydig cells which are nested within your testicles which are the very crucible of testosterone synthesis. Now, research has demonstrated that honey, raw honey specifically, I'm going to go, I've got some, I've got some different forms of honey here, right, uh, right on my table, which I'll share with you towards the latter end of the video, because there is a difference between the type that you get within stores and, and the real stuff fundamentally. The honey can increase the production of luteinizing hormone, which in turn is going to stimulate the Leydig cells uh, producing more testosterone fundamentally. There's a reason why bears are considered among, you know, the apex predators on planet Earth and their fondness for, for honey, not just Winnie the Pooh, but the more voracious and aggressive temperamental uh, bears. Grizzly energy is really what we're seeking here. Now, a lot of this information comes from this particular study. So again, I always like, I'm, I'm trying to get more in a habit, gentlemen, of referencing the kind of sources that I'm uh, getting a lot of my information from. This is a fantastic study by Salim on the mechanisms of honey on testosterone levels in the body. And there's several different mechanisms that we have to be sensitive towards if we are going to reason testosterone synthesis to the best of our understanding and execute with more diligence on including honey in our particular uh, diet. I actually just got eating some honey in a uh, in a dessert. I mean, it's not a particularly complex dessert that I like, but I'm going to share with you a little bit later on where you can start to implement a little bit more of honey, raw honey into your, into your diet. So there's three main mechanisms we need to be sensitive towards. So the first is quercetin. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So quercetin is this potent antioxidant flavonoid, which is found to be present in honey. Now, the effects of quercetin on testosterone has been explored in various occasions. So this is something that has been studied numerous times. There's a lot of weight, a lot of scientific evidence, subjective empirical evidence behind you know, the, the, the role of quercetin in our, or quercetin, might be quercetin, or quercetin, is, you, you, one of the affiliation of those two, um, in the body. So most notably, supplementation for 15 days, approximately 50 milligrams, was found to enhance serum levels 
of uh, testosterone in male rats with uh, arsenic induced reproductive toxicity. So in many ways, it can be considered an, an antidote to some of the toxins that perhaps we are indirectly exposing ourselves to, particularly, you know, rationally, objectively studied arsenic. A lot of people don't like any animal studies and say, again, you know, it's a big jump from rats to humans, but there's a reason that we do studies on animals because there's a there's a biological counterpart to them. Of course, we're biological organisms. There's, there's going to be there's going to be some utility in these studies for us. And the next part is cryosin. Now, cryosin is a flavonoid which presents at high levels in uh, propioles and honey. It has a wide range of pharmacological properties, mainly antioxidants, anti-cancer, and anti-inflammatories. And I've been quoted many, many times saying that any you know, diseases they all start with some form of inflammation in the body, which is stimulating a you know white blood cell response. It has been shown that cryosin orally supplemented at 50 milligrams for two months significantly increased the tes testicular level of glutathione, as well as the activities of the antioxidants enzymes, such as such of which are catalase, glutathione, peroxidase, and the others. So it's been recognized as a inhibitor of, this is the one of the most significant parts, a inhibitor of the enzyme aromatase, which is an enzyme catalyst of the conversion to testosterone, testosterone to estradiol. So that estrogenic effect that's happening in our body through the aromatization process is a consequence of other elements like BPA, maybe soy products as well. And this has an inverse relationship with those kinds of mechanisms that are going on within our body. So raw honey in that regard is, or can be, there can be a strong argument made that this could be used for utility in that particular aspect. So it's considered the kind of conclusion to this particular point here to be used as a testosterone boosting agent. One of the final parts, and I'm going to come on to the different, the different, uh, let's say options we can have to introduce honey into the diet in just a moment is the star gene. So star protein plays an important role in the steroidogenesis process by facilitation of the transport of cholesterol, which we all know is essential for the health of our uh, membranes, our cells. You know, fat in general is going to be imperative in respects to our hormonal health and our cognitive function to the internal mitochondrial membrane. Thus, cholesterol cleavage occurs in pregnenolone in Leydig cells, you know, our lead, leading cells, so they're comprising the makeup of our leading cells, which increases the synthesis of our testosterone. So these three major mechanisms are going to be very, very valuable for you to understand the rationalization to include more raw, raw honey into your diet. Now, I'm just going to take the conclusion from this particular study of the mechanisms of testosterone levels by Salim and read this out to you. So he concludes in this particular study is that collectively the mainstream of this specific research approaches uh, approach reveals that oral administrations of honey enhances serum testosterone levels in males. The mechanisms by which honey increase serum testosterone levels may be by enhancing number one, LH, number two, the viability of the Leydig cells, number three, reducing testicular oxidative injury, number four, enhancing star gene expression, and number five, inhibiting aromatization activity in the testes. So five major mechanisms honey is going to have a effect in. Now, I want to share with you some of the options that you can particularly uh, use. So I'll start off with the ones that can potentially have, maybe not good sources is the best way to describe it. Now, I have here a Tesco's own brand, Clear Honey. Now, the interesting aspect of this is when you look at the ingredients of the back, it actually doesn't say. The only thing it alludes to here is a blend of non-UE honey. Now, sometimes these, these can be cut with other things. They can be cut with seed oils. They can be cut with um, corn syrup and other sugars that are manufactured, which aren't going to give us the benefits. In this way, I would have you, and it's wrapped in plastic as well. So I'd, I would have you not use these kinds of things. The best thing would be to get from di direct from an apiary, right? So I have here, the brand is uh, Medusas, and I don't know if this is going to be, I believe it's a UK brand, but this is forest flower raw honey, okay? 
So this is organic, unprocessed honey from a single apiary direct from beehive to the jar. So straight from the beehive to the jar. No added manufacturing processes and systems here. It is just straight from the beehive. It is a little bit more thicker in its consistency relative to the clear honey option that I showed you. So mixing it can be a little bit more challenging, but the, the taste is phenomenal. And you can certainly taste the difference respectively to the clear honey. Sounds like an ad, doesn't it? Well, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal option. I think I only got this for like 10 pounds and there's 1.4 kilograms of honey in here. So this is going to last me a long, long time. I've recently purchased some uh, bee pollen, which has so uh, shown some uh, parallel scientific literature to be testosterone boosting similarly to the raw honey there's also bee bread you might want to look into as well and also raw royal jelly honey i believe the term is called so best advice is i mean with everything that we talk about here gentlemen it's about finding sources of foods that have minimal ingredients and that are untouched for any kind of manufacturing process that are organic that are raw and untouched from fundamentally preservatives. You know, these seed oils, the corn syrup, they're all an attempt to improve shelf. I mean, it might be a stretch of the imagination to stay, but I'd be very, very interested to hear your personal opinions on how you include raw honey in your diet. Um, if there's any other options that you would recommend for the other, other brothers in the, uh, in the chat below. I usually use raw honey whenever I'm using, um, so I just had some uh, some Icelandic yogurt. I take uh, maybe half a teaspoon, half a tablespoon, pardon me, of this raw honey and mix it in with Icelandic yogurt. You can use Greek yogurt, but this is a, a phenomenal sweetener to those, natural sweetener. And I'm you know really of the opinion that in terms of sweetening up, you know, our, our, our yogurts or maybe our, our porridges or, you know, any, any anything you want to add a little bit more taste to, Raw honey is the go-to, and um, and maple syrup, maple syrup as uh, as well. But again, I'm I'm very interested to hear your personal recommendations on here. If you would have me research anything else and uh, do a video on it, but uh, these are not theories; these are facts today, gentlemen. Speak soon.